Hi, this is going to be another one of those PicoScope videos that are mostly made for my students but might be of interest to some other people. So uh, if you find it useful, please do consider subscribing. Give the video the thumbs up. Now I know that people are watching it and somehow finding it useful. OK, so what we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a look at this uh, timing circuit. It's a monostable timer. Let me just rearrange the screen a little bit. So we've uh, got this monostable, it's a 555 timer. And so when I press that switch, that then briefly turns the LED on. We're not going to worry too much about the actual operation of the circuit because what we want to do is actually uh, understand about how to use uh, two channels uh, in PicoScope and also like uh, different scope views and, and things like that. So at the moment, hopefully you can see that we've got a single scope view available here and we are only showing the trace for, for the uh, for probe A for channel A. Uh, notice that the channels are labeled there. We've got A, we've got B. Uh, I also, uh, as a habit, uh, tend to actually write those channels onto my probe so I don't get confused. Notice I'm only using one ground wire. There's actually some safety benefits in doing that in some situations, but I'm not going to go into safety in this video. Uh, but there's only a need uh, when you're uh, probing multiple channels, there's only a need to actually have one ground. It's actually sometimes better just to have the one. Uh, and I've just put that into zero volts. Okay, so all the measurements that I'm um, going to be showing you here are uh, relative to ground potential, zero volts. So the A is going to connect to, via this jumper wire, to the uh, output of that switch. And we've got a pull-up resistor. Oops, sorry. We've got a pull-up resistor there. So normally it's it's high. Here you can see that it's normally high, about three and a half-ish volts. When I press that switch, You'll see, well, you will see if I just, uh, let me just rearrange the screen. By the way, I'm using OBS Studio now, and I'm an uh, absolute newbie to uh, using the software. So uh, if uh, I make a few mistakes, uh, you just have to bear with me. When I, when I press that switch, uh, it goes down low for as long as I'm pressing the switch. Um, you might uh, notice at the moment it's... Uh, it's 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 auto ranging okay it's switching between volts and uh, millivolts but it might be so and that's that's a little bit annoying when it does that i find so i'm just going to set it so it stays on five volts so that's what we're going to do there and so now when i press the uh, switch it goes down to uh, approximately uh, zero volts and then goes back up to approximately three and a half volts Okay, so at the moment we've only got one uh, scope uh, trace shown, so it would be nice if we have another um, another channel shown, channel B. Remember, we've got channel B there. That's easy enough to do because at the moment channel B is currently off. Hopefully you can see that uh, channel B is uh, listed as off there. So if I then um, add a, uh, well, no longer off if I say specify 5 volts. Remember, I, I'm going to avoid using auto because it's a bit of a pain. And then so notice now that the output, this is the output to the uh, LED. And then so then if the uh, pin 3 on 555 timer. So then if I press that switch briefly, uh, of course, the, the trigger uh, went low. Uh, trigger went low and then the output went high and of course it's really difficult to actually follow this particularly when these traces are overwriting each other so what i can do there i can go on to views add view and i'll add another scope and but unfortunately well maybe it's fortunate it depends on what you want but uh, the way it's set up at the moment i've still basically I've just got like a, a copy of it okay so what I'm going to do is on this top scope, I'm going to only show channel A. So let's hide B. Uh, in fact, I didn't. I think I didn't click on the right one there, but I, that doesn't matter. OK, so I think uh, let's just double click again. So I'm looking at two screens here and I'm looking at OBS Studio as well. I'm getting all confused. So yeah, so that one I'm currently viewing uh, just A. So let's get rid of A. Let's only show uh, B. OK, and then so on this this uh, top one, let's only show uh, A. So now top scope, just channel A, uh, bottom scope, just channel B. So now when I press the switch, let's do this, you'll see that that was the uh, the top one showed the revealed the voltage for the switch, the input, the, the trigger, and then the bottom was the output. And of course, it's really difficult to actually see this because it's quickly going off the screen. 
So what we really need then is triggering. So let's go down to where it says trigger and we we'll say single and actually we specify uh, which channel uh, we're talking about here. So I don't think it would actually matter which uh, scope view we would actually be uh, clicked in. So I want it to trigger on channel A, which uh, so I want the triggering to happen when uh, say the voltage goes low because that's when the switch is pressed. So uh, single triggering, single event triggering uh, when it goes low, okay, falling edge in other words. And then what I'm going to then do is I'm going to set the threshold to be when it falls below two volts, then start the triggering. And remember on falling edge. So now what we do, hopefully when we press the switch briefly like that, uh, now we've captured it. Okay, so that was the duration of the switch press, and then that's the duration of the output. Now, of course, if you want to, you can add uh, measurements. So, for example, for channel A, we could measure the uh, the uh, low pulse width, so the width, the time which the uh, switch was pressed. So let's uh, do that. Uh, 151 milliseconds apparently and then we could say uh, measure the output that the uh, LED was on for so let's uh, let's do that so let's go on to measurements and uh, well that's going to be channel B isn't it I think so go to channel B and then say let's have the high pulse width and we click on OK and then so that tells us that the um, LED or pin 3 really strictly speaking pin 3 of the 555 timer was on for a duration of uh, just over um, 650 milliseconds. Okay, I um, hope that's useful. Um, and actually, if you like the format of uh, using OBS Studio, um, do do give me a bit of feedback on that. I don't know whether the uh, the views on the screen of these multiple views are actually confusing or not, and also have these transition things which allow me to resize things and get things to be faded um, and incidentally I don't know whether you notice I'm really pleased with the actual quality of the uh, of the video this is not a webcam by the way this is actually using uh, my mobile phone uh, using an app on my mobile phone so this is actually getting streamed via the Wi-Fi uh, to my computer to OBS studio <clears throat> excuse me um, and so I, I think that's really good and uh, I'm, I'm an absolute novice to OBS uh, studio so um, yeah but um, from the little that I've uh, seen so far I've not read any instructions for it so uh, it's not too difficult to um, to get to grips with the little bit I know and still need to find out about the scenes whatever they are okay um, if you find the video useful um, please give it a thumbs up if you want to make a suggestion for how I should use OBS studio as well uh, any comments are uh, greatly received. Thanks for watching.